All right, looks like we are rolling live. Happy Saturday, folks. Welcome to Marshall Motion here with uh, Coach Mike here and my movements. And we are going to start today on the ground. Okay, so uh, those that are new, uh, this is Saturday's level three. Um, of course, followed by this Monday, which is level one. Wednesday, level two, and again on Saturday, level three. Um, requirements. Um, I would say suggestions, if anything, let me go as minimal as possible. I want to go all body weights. For the most part, we use some props here and there, but even those are hardly even touched. Um, yoga mat, okay. Recommended water, for sure, and a towel if you need. And I would say your dimensions would be between eight and 10 square feet of usable space. I like hardwood floor, just so I know that I'm meeting the earth, the ground beneath me, which can be, you know, a harm to you if you meet it too compactly, that we're meeting it with good intentions, good mindfulness, okay? So, um, you can start with socks on or socks off, okay? Depending on how slippery you want the surface to be, okay? Socks on usually creates more slickness. I'm gonna go ahead and take them off just so I can make sure that I can be very careful in how I touch the ground, okay? So let's go ahead and start here. Okay, we're gonna go into our cat cows, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the tops of my feet to the mat. Really try and bump the top of the feet, really almost like keep touching if you can. Really point those feet. I wanna get my thighs perpendicular to the ground as well as my arms. Okay, shoulders width apart. Here. While pressing my hands and tops of my feet firmly into the ground, I'm going to go ahead and go for an inhalation. Okay? So as I inhale, I'm going to go ahead and press belly down for my cow. And up, belly down, and back. Exhalation. Now as I go through these motions here, right? I want to try and keep my thighs still perpendicular to the ground. Still pressing through the tops of the feet. In and out. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Really good. Track in that core. Push the belly down as the head goes up. I go chin to chest. Really push my spine up towards the sky. We'll press the tops of the feet to the mat. And time. Okay, so now from here, we can go to just a regular down to up dogs. Okay, let's start now. Position, so we slide back to the bottom of the yoga mat and press those sticks down to the mat. Brought front of body up and forward, making sure the hands are still shoulders width apart, hips down, tops of feet to the mat, but legs are off. And we're going to go ahead and push back to that down dog, pushing back. Take my shoulders in line, flip my hands, flip the feet over. We can roll over them one at a time. Head in between the arms. Keep those arms back nice and straight. Bring those heels down towards the back. Slight bend in the knee. Let's let the pedal out the feet. Heel down, heel up, heel down, up, alternating left and right. Nice. Let's go ahead and roll back. Raise those heels off the ground, straighten the legs, stay in the balls of the feet, keep the chin to the chest. Roll forward, hips down, and raise the head up. Then those hips down towards the back. Okay, I know 
I'm just gonna roll in sensation. I'm gonna do that two more times, okay? So this time I'm gonna roll back, gripping my chin to my chest, and really push up just like my cat cow up between the shoulder blades. Pushing through the shoulder blades only. And then I'm gonna raise my hips up and back. That wave travel down from the top of the spine to the base. As I again lower my heels down to the ground, arms back straight, and again, pedal those feet. So stay engaged in all four corners of the hands. Nice. Again, raise those heels. Keep the head in between your arms, chin to the chest. This time, build, bowing up through the sacrum, through the mid-back, keeping my chin to my chest as my hips lower down. Back to that modified up dog. Balls my feet to the back, gaze is up, hips down. Nice, one more. Chin to my chest. Pushing through the shoulder blades only. Then I begin to elevate mid back, lower back. Raise those heels off the ground, head in between your arms, arms straight, back straight, lower the heels down. And let's go ahead and pedal. That slight bend in the knee. And one more time, let's roll forward. Raising the heels, keep the chin to the chest, still looking back between my legs, really engaging the core as my shoulders go past my hands, my hips lower, my chin stays in my chest. As my hips lower down, it begins to rise. Shoulders back, gaze forward. Excellent. Okay. Now let's go from here. Two. Child's pose. So I'm pushing back on the tops of my feet. Let's really stretch out the back. Let's go and walk those fingers slowly. This is really elongation, lengthening the spine. As you drop the heels of the hips back towards the heels. Excellent. Okay, so now from here. You can use the yoga mat for this or not. I'm going to turn around, my hips facing up into that crab position, right? So it's like a crab walks, okay? I'm going to bring my hands just beneath my shoulders, feet just beneath my knees, and raise up for bridges one arm at a time. I raise the hips up, palms facing towards the ground, and my arm parallel. And so there's a string between the heel of my palm and my hips. As I extend back, my hips rise up. Try to keep the heels down and lower. That hand goes back to that same position. Hips down, I raise up again, opposite hand. Stay facing all four quarters of the hands you go, even straightening out the wrists. Palm faces down, arms parallel. Hips up. Raise those hips, extend with the arm, do the base arm straight, shoulders to chest above the wrist. As we go, keep your vision on your palm as you raise up and reach back. Opening up the hips just a few more. Raise it up. Excellent, and time. Okay, it's still for our combat base. So here, I'm gonna roll back to my flower position. So I'm bringing my feet back. My legs nice and straight. I like to demi-point my foot. Here's my leg 
good structure. As I roll back, keep your arms to the ground, or you can use your hands to assist. And for hammy stretch, lower back stretch, keep your legs straight. Internally rotated, knees pointing towards your head. A little here, I roll forward. On one hip, keeping my hands to my head, one foot behind one knee, as I roll forward as slowly as I can. Back down on that same hip, so I'm not compromising the small of my back. I'm still back into that flower position. Left legs nice and straight, and roll the other leg. One foot behind one knee, and back down. Back just a bit, so back to the frame. Five. Really extending those legs. One foot behind one knee. I bring my hands to my head. Go to my three point base. Foot, foot, knee. Back down. I end up my hip. Not my sacrum. Okay, bring the arms back. Other foot behind the other knee. As I roll forward, my hand rises. And back down. Two more. Legs nice and straight. And rolling. One foot behind my knee. Slowly up with balance, with no aid from my hands. Last one. Hands down also represents my break fall. Behind the knee, roll over the chin, up and forward. Okay, now let's go back to that crab position here. This time I'm going to bring my hands a little bit closer together. So not directly beneath my shoulders, but a little closer underneath my shoulder blades. Okay, so what I do is I'm going to raise up to that same bridge, really open up those hips again. This time I'm going to bring the same side leg up and into my chest. So bring that hand to the ground, bending my other leg, straighten the other, and I turn all the way back around to that full 360. I go the opposite way, raise up, really open up those obliques, the hips. Same side foot, points as I draw that knee into my chest, back facing forward. This we're doing slowly. We can only do four in one minute's time. That'd be impressive as long as we're keeping continuity in our motion. Up, straighten that leg. Try and keep your pace the same throughout the entire move. Open the hips up. Draw that knee to the chest. Hands close together. Straighten the leg, then bend it again. Up. Open the hips. Draw the knee in. Up. In. Tuck it in. So the feet are on the same plane. 30 seconds. You do what you will in that 30 seconds. Have the movement good. You can maybe go a little faster, but still keeping the same rate. Of movement. Hands to my head, arms to my body. Not too different than my combat base here. My standing base. We'll do both of those in a bit. Raise up. Opposite hand, opposite foot. One more. Drop that hand. Same level as the one your base on. Then base goes into that hand. As I come back up to that three point base and time. Let's go ahead and grab some more boats back in. You can put your yoga mask to the side for now. As we angle up. Angle my camera up. 
so we can get to, into more of a standing position. 10 seconds. Okay, so first, from here, we're going to go into that deep spot, press the palms together, pray your palms, back straight, stretch out those wrists. It's like we took it up, and I'm going back nice and straight. Inhaling through the nose, big exhalation through the mouth. One more, keep that back nice and straight. Keep all four corners plugging to the ground. And let those arms hang nice and heavy. Head nice and heavy. Let's heel toe together. To the feet are hips width apart. Inhale, arms nice and heavy, and just roll up one vertebrae at a time, starting from the base, rotating those hips back. Roll up all the way up, interlace the bones, raise up and back for a big back bend. And sweep those arms out to the side, flex the wrists down. Excellent. Okay. Now, to bring those feet slightly wider than the part of going forward, you might cross it. So, straight across. Punches. Two minutes straight. Now, your range opens up more and more as you go along. So, start out slow. Find a connection through the ball of the feet, through the ground, through the knee, the hip, the core, the shoulder, elbow, all the way through to the knuckles. Raising that heel, turning the hip, find the rotation as it relates to the thrust. Okay? My thrust coming forward, just like my punches. Thrusting the rotation in my hips and in my feet. Keep going. Come up on halfway. Now I'm punching directly east west across. The same line as my shoulders. Same line as my shoulders. Keep going. And again, I want you to feel what that means for you. So maybe our hips are a little tight. Maybe the toes are a little inflexible, right? Really get on the ball of the feet, and not just one or two toes, all five toes. Really engaging that calf muscle. Nice. Now the last thing I want you to start blowing your breath. So our breath has to have some resistance towards the end of the strike. And the end is our intended target. Since we don't have a physical target right now, keep going out to not make this a show. So here, this is my target, right? That so my arm is still slightly bent, right? So I can go through the target. Straight wrist, the nice square fist. Okay, so I'm open my first two knuckles, punch it across. One hand to the head, as the other one punches. Remember, B, the side, A, front. Turn, raise the heel. Turn that hip. Now more breath. Slightly closed teeth. Definitely engage and contract it well within my core. I'm raising that ball of the foot off the ground. And time. Okay, let's go. Kicks, we go straight up in the sky. Step, kick, up. Step back, step forward. This is my switch motion, lateral view. As that leg comes back, comes back slightly, right? So I can step back and then kick to the other. Step back, step back, step forward. Back, back, forward, up. Back, back, forward, up. Two, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. I notice on the fourth. 
four. Cross flying arm comes down. As the cross flying leg rises up, so keep my hand to my head for protection, my arm to my body for protection. Keep a little higher with each one, and even flex the foot. That foot's in a nice flex position. Further engage, stretch along that hamstring. Step back, step back, forward, up. Back, back, forward, up. Now it's going to slow down as you lower, right? Up fast, down slow, right? Test the balance. You get a raising heel here. Control on the way down. Control. And time. Now, I'm going to get into some hip rotation here. So now I'm going to go ahead and just throw the knee in so my thighs parallel to the ground and out and down. Up, out, and down. Now let's go ahead and keep the hands up. Just opening the hips. Open, close, to lower. Sparks and front, ends the side. Nice and nine degree rotation. Keeping the hands to the head. I could kind of bounce, right? But here I want to keep more control than anything. In, out, in, out, in, out. And switch from out to in. Starts off the side. Close. Close the gate. Close the gate. Up. Close the gate. Good control in that base leg. Good balance. Excellent. And time. Let's go back to those punches again. Just one minute this time. Now, really snapping with breath. Be neutral. Slightly wider than the apart. Let's have a good wide base here. Right? We're not in a direct combat position here, right? Where I have my feet staggered. Okay? As though I were engaged. But here, it's giving an even wider base than normal. Just get more my hands or push from my legs. Turn those hips, snap those punches. Again, when I snap, still keep a slight bend in the arm. Don't overextend the arm. At least not for now. Turning that heel, pushing through the ball of the foot, and time. Let's go down, back down to the ground. We're going to get into that cow cow position, or really more of a tabletop position where the tops of my feet are off the mat now, right? But I'm on the balls of my feet. Knees hovering above the ground. I raise up both legs at a time. I'm going into a handstand here, right? Both legs. Doesn't have to be too long of a handstand, right? Let's take it up. Land on one foot and kick it through with the other. Notice that same opposite hand, opposite foot motion, right? Kick through. Kick through. Nice. More for one minute. Now remember, each time I go through, I'm going to make sure that I'm bringing the opposite hand to my head as I kick through. And again, not totally straighten the leg out, right? Or keep a slight bend. So here, just like in my combat base, my uh, my standing base, if I were to raise up here, I still have room for more thrust. 
if the object is near me. Okay? Near red. Standing base. Okay? As we say before, keep going. Kick through. Kick up. Kick through. I switch my feet in the air. Up. Switch. Down. Carefully. No sound as you lower this to the ground. On our thrust is our exhalation. In time, keep squatting. Drop down, really low, really low. Press the palms together, keep that back nice and straight. Breathe. Two more. Deeper in the breath, straight back. Head slightly tilted up. One more, keep those feet based into the ground. Press those palms together, straighten the wrists, stretch the fingers. Okay, come out as you need. Let the head hang heavy, arms up, head up nice and slow. One vertebrae at a time from the base to the top and grab some water. Back in, 30. Not too much water, of course. You don't want that belly cramp. Okay, so now from here, we're gonna go back to standing again. Okay, just stretch out the legs and also strengthen them simultaneously. So angling up for those coming just back in. And I wanna keep good control. So the purpose of my counterbalance when I throw, right, is as it calls for, right? My momentum's going in one direction. I need something else to counter that so that I can stay balanced. Okay? So that's why when we throw our front kicks or teeps, cross my arm comes down, right? Because my leg goes up. It. it just affords me more balance, okay? Whereas if I did it without my arm coming down, right? I may fall back, I may fall forward, okay? They know where I put more of my energy. Right? So you'll find what that balance is. They know the arms, a little bit smaller than the leg, definitely less powerful than the leg, right? So I kind of figure out as I go along what energy I put into each to keep myself balanced. Okay, but for now, we're going to avoid the counterbalance again. Okay, so keep my hands up and my arms at my side. I want to get an frame right here. I don't want to be too tight right here. It's not for this position. Or an A-frame here, B-frame to the side. And straighten my head. Arms are still protecting my body. Keep the posture upright. We're going to go for a front kick, side kick, and rear kick. Now, notice when I kick, my toes and heels will be facing east west. Okay? Just bring out a space here. Okay? So, here, kick forward, kick side, heel toe. East west. And then from here, if you need to touch the ground, that's fine. Let's go ahead and go for the challenge and just keep the foot off the ground for all three of those kicks. And I go forward, side, and back. With the right. Side here. And down. So before you kicking, front, side. Back, okay. The back one probably more of a challenge. You have to turn your head and stay facing that foot at the same time. Okay, let's go. Two minutes. And go. Okay, so good firm base. Remember, lock into the breathing, right? Upright position and leg down. Lean back to the front kick, I lean to the side for my side kick. Of course, in the opposite direction. I lean forward for my back kick. And back down. Okay, 
now as we start to close, close, draw closer to the end. Now what I want us to do is to be slower. It's up, arms and body. Look where you're kicking. Keep that base. Notice how my breathing is still corresponding to the rate of my extension. Nice. Keep going. Keep going. Left, left, left. Right, right, right. Excellent. Now, what we're going to start doing is we close down the final 30 seconds. I want you to kick faster, but less counter bounce. Don't lean. Try to lean. Stay base in that plant foot. Now. Bring it back. Three chamber. The big chambers when I bring my heel back towards my butt to load in the strike. Nice. And time. Okay, now let's go into some standing combinations here. Right. My jab and my cross. My back foot. My strong foot. So if you're right handed, step your right foot back. 45 degree angle along that 45 degree plane along the outer edge of the foot. So as I throw my cross, which is my right, comes from a rear distance, comes across my body, therefore has more power. Okay? That heel raises off the ground and also turns to the point where both my toes are now facing the same direction like I'm on skis. Okay? And when I bring that punch back, heel comes back down. Toe, knee, cross spine still facing that 45 degree angle. Jab, cross, left, right. Let's go for our round kicks. Remember, I step and I throw. And I want to throw that full turn around. Jab, cross. Notice when I throw, I'm still protecting with another part of my body. Jab, cross. Step with the left, kick with the right. Right, keep going. Left, right, and right. Step. Okay. Right arm comes right alongside my right leg. And we start picking up the velocity a bit. But as I do so, right, I chamber and extend throughout the entire route of my kick, which goes up, diagonal, and horizontal. Okay. So here, look. Notice I let go, extend the leg as it passes that mid, mid threshold. And my breath does the same. Jab, cross. Begin with what? Mid to lower shin. Don't want to extend too much. Arms to the body, hand to the head. Raise that base foot, heel off the ground. Jab, cross. And time. So that was just to be acclimate us with the round kick. Now we're gonna go to the opposite side. This time I can come off that round kick, get that full pivot. Now say we can't do the full pivot 360. Let's go for it, you know, just a 180. Okay? Okay, and stop there. But as soon as that foot hits the ground, that's what I'm putting my weight onto, right? I don't really have to bring my heel down to the ground here though. As soon as I come around, step back on it. I'm coming right forward with that right cross this time. Left hook with a nice switch to a left kick. Okay, so now that I'm back in the frame here, okay, jab, cross. I know you can see my arms from here, but just my feet first. I step forward with my left to not only get closer to my opponent, but also propel my right leg forward. So I step, push, okay. As soon as I turn back around, I plant that leg. Put that edge right to my right cross. Cross. Left hook. And then from there, left back, right forward. 
my left kick and step back into my stance two steps at a time. Okay. Or one step at a time, two steps total. All right. So, body again, jack cross. Here, step, butt, right. Cross, hook, left back, right forward, left kick. Okay, crossing that same threshold, but I want to go ahead and stop midway the route of my kick because I can look back at where my intended target was. So I step back and I step back further away, giving myself time to recover both balance and vision. Okay, let's go. We're gonna put all that together here. All right, I will go facing up. See my upper body here. Okay, and here we go. Two minutes. Step, kick, turn, cross my hook. Notice that hook right there, right? Palm faces down. Arm stays in that bend position. So I'm not only adding thrust to my punch, but also building momentum through centrifugal motion. I keep in that bend in the arm. Coming from an angle, sneaky. Wow. Right from there, I go and switch. This arm comes down as my leg goes back and up. Counterbalancing my left kick. I step back to my stance. Keep going. Upright. Right kick. Right, left. Switch. Left kick. Step back into that stance. Okay? Let's go. Step, kick. Cross. Switch. Now remember my switch motion. You keep going as you watch. Okay? Bring my left foot back. Step my right foot forward. Pull that switch. Thus creating a bit more power from my otherwise weaker leg. Or I can just hop and switch. Okay? Notice that I lose control at a moment in time when both my feet are off the ground. Okay? Not my preferred way, but it's a good way to start. Okay? Just get some power in that rear, in that front leg, which now became the rear. Okay? Or I can step slightly back right here in a hopping motion and push further forward to chase that target. Okay? Now let's look at that speed. Right? And again, imagine that. I'm that target right in front of you, like it's a, a pole right here, or you know, or bamboo stick, something soft, right? Let me get it first kick, okay? So imagine a hitting with the shin bone right here, okay? Then again here, right? Give myself a nice little prop here. Let's go ahead and kick it over. Okay, so this is still voluntarily. Go ahead and bring this up. Knock this around here. Nice up and kick over. So it gives me that same line to go through imaginarily, right? You go a little higher, you know, as on your hip strength and flexibility. Kicking through, lifting the leg as you go along. Jackpot, right kick, right, left, switch kick, turn, step back. Okay, last one. Kick, full pivot, cross, hook, switch. Step back and time. Okay, let's go into that deep squat again. We're going to go for our jump beam squats. Okay, butt's nice and low, hands high. You push the ground away as we go with explosive breath and motion. Hands up, ready, and go. Land soft. That's two. Push the ground away, get those heels down, and ah, okay, let's go ahead and grab some water back in 30 seconds. Okay, we're going to put those yoga mats back out. Okay, so here we go. 
back into our combat based drills. Okay, so how we develop that core strength, right? To have a nice, stable combat base. Okay, combat base is my combat position for when I'm on the ground. Raising them. Okay, now notice here, I want to bring my foot slightly more ahead of the rest of my body here, right? So I have a good, strong base, good, wide base. My base is too narrow right here, right? It can be easy for me to get pushed over, okay? Even though I can get pushed along that same plane and possibly fall back a bit, the wider my base, right? I can even push back, toss my foot, or I can tuck my toes so that it's really hard for me to get pushed back, okay? So we get our toes a bit more flexible, right? We just over the top of the foot here. It's still a pretty strong base, okay? It's easy to roll over the shed each time. So here, roll back. Now, when I bring my foot behind my knee, I'm really angled on one hip at a time, okay? So we can save our lower back, tuck my foot behind my knee, but not literally, okay? Just in that same position, raise up and forward. And back down that same hip as I switch my hips, okay? So now I'm on my right side, my right hips on the ground, my right knee, and I roll over my right shin, my right pointed foot. Back down, back up. Pull my toes facing forward on my front foot. Okay, so my head. Now we keep going along. Stop using momentum. Being the mat really soft and quiet. Okay, now without going to your back, you switch. Hold, stress the hips. Switch. Forward. On your hip. Switch to the other hip, then switch to the other leg, and back. Switch. Switch. And time. Okay. So now from here, I'm going to go back into the same position. Uh, well, into our bridges, this time we're going to be a bit more grounded. Okay, so so bridging with my back off the ground, now I'm going to be fully prone. But from that fully prone position, toss my feet into the mat. And I'm going to go to that same bridge that we did earlier, right? And this time, instead of basing on my hands, I'm going to base on my shoulder. Bridge up. That arm comes up and across. Bring the hips back down towards the feet. Again, I get more elevation when my butt's closer to my heels. Okay? So I raise up. And I look at my palms as I raise up. I'm not raising my heels just yet. I'm just trying to one shoulder to the My three points are now both feet, equally distributed weight in both feet, and one shoulder. One shoulder stack at the top of the other. Then we feel we have that with good balance. Let's go ahead and start to raise the heels off the ground. In our balance, of course, trying to keep weight distributed in both feet. Keep it on to the body. Shoulder stack at the top of one another. Open those hips. Now faster. Still being mindful of the points of the bones, right? Try and stay on that soft tissue in the mid-back and rear down. I raise the heels, I drop the heels. Be sure to bring those hips back down towards the heels. And time. Okay, back to that bridge position. 
toes one way, fingers the other. Okay, just raise up. up. Again, I'm going to bring, draw that same side knee into the chest. Go ahead and point that foot. Keep good architecture in the entire body. Hand comes down, pulls the other. Other hand comes up to my head. That foot tucked, but pointed here. And bring that foot on the same plane. Right, you'll find yourself a little off kilter, right? Manage that balance as we go along. Okay, opposite hand, up. And then I'm gonna bring that same side knee into my chest. So I'm based on two points. Left hand, right foot. So bring the hands closer together. One more centered base, that triangulation. Up, cross. Really open up that hip first. Then draw the knee to the chest. Pivoting on that base foot. One more minute. And again, that minute, as I can't see you all, can be based on, based on my balance through going continuously, but really slow. Feel you have this movement, and you're not really flailing around too much. Go a little quicker. But again, keep the same rate of motion intentionally. Be mindful of your breath. Open up. And close. Open up. And close. Draw the breath in. And draw it out. Come back to that position. Up. Extend. Draw the knee into the chest. Pivoting on the ball of the foot. Keep that motion. Keep those arms nice and straight. Hands just below the shoulder. Good pivot, good rotation. And time. Okay, let's go back into that standing position. Okay, we're going to get to a little bit more thrust for our standing position. Grab a quick sip of order if you need. Quick sip, real quick sip. And right back in. Okay, we're going right back to our standing position. Now again, I'm engaged in my core. And as I'm engaged in my core, I have to be engaged with my breath as well. Okay. Really want to make sure that I'm breathing. Um, really get into my diaphragm. Okay. I don't want to breathe my upper register too much, right? Into a bit more of a mechanic breathing, right? Uh, hyperventilation. Okay. And make sure I'm Sustainably oxygenating all of my lungs. Okay, so when I punch, when I thrust, when I exhale, right, all of those together is nice and compact, right? Squeeze the air out of the lungs just at the top. That's right. I let go and re expand the lungs with fresh oxygen. Okay, so now from here, what I'm going to go into is I'm going into a knee and then a kick. Okay. So, as a matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to flip that around actually. Okay, so I'm going to go around the foot a different way. Okay, I've done this before. I want to mix these two together. Okay, so I'm going to go around the first and the same side knee. Okay, now how do I do that? I stop once I meet that center point. So I'm not really crashing through like before, really rotating the hips too much. I want to go right to the point, maybe slightly through, and then back to my base. Okay, so jab, cross. I step forward, let's go that same round kick. But I meet the middle, and I come back just to use the momentum of that foot stepping back, step forward with my left. Okay, thrusting forward with that knee. I seize that knee, right? I draw my heel close to my butt, foot's pointed, moves forward for that stabbing motion. Okay, one more time from the same side. My jab, my cross. I step with my left foot. 
go through the threshold, but bring it back. Have that core control. It may even slow you down a bit. Don't worry about going fast at first. As soon as that foot touches the ground, I use the step forward and come back into my stance. Okay? Just that for now. Jab cross. Back step good. Compact resistance breathing. Okay? And here we go. Close the rotation, right? Then the thrust. Okay? Angle down towards my feet. Keep going. Left, right, right, right. Four for those soft paws. Right? Those are soft paws. Keep going. Right, left. Left. Step. Left. Okay? Back to my stance. Notice how hard it is to keep that heel off the ground. Keep going. Keep going. Put that round kick. My heel has to turn, and I have to have that wear ball within my core to bring it back. Step back, step forward for that knee. Okay, more breath. What I don't want to do when I throw that round kick, I don't want to just bring my heel back to my butt. I want to bring the entire leg back as one. Step. Right, you can get in that clenched knee, okay? Hand behind the head, pull the head down towards that knee. And time, okay? Now, putting everything together this time, okay? One again, kick, then the knee. Jab, cross, kick, knee. Step into that knee, as soon as that foot steps back. Guess what, just like last time, I use that foot to propel, my right hand forward again, and then that heel back down, as I throw that left hook. What happens now? I switch my left kick, left back, right forward, left kick, step back just far enough away so I can get some forward momentum with my right leg now for my left knee. Lateral, jab, cross, round kick, bring it back, knee, step back, cross, hook, switch left back, kick. Step back, step forward for that knee. All right, final minute. Let's go. Try to stay on that heel, right? As far as it is, right? Thank you up the ground. I want to try and keep on that same pivot and come right back. Keep going. Just watch me as we go along. Go at your pace, right? Just look back at me as a reference. Turn on the heel, bring it back. Knee. Right away to that cross. Hook. Switch, kick, step back slightly to take a big step forward. Then I come right back into my original stance. Counter balance. Counter balance. Wow. Notice that half beat between my right foot coming down from that knee and then my right hand coming forward for the punch. Okay, so everything from the beginning. Jab, cross. Knee, step, cross, hook, switch, kick, bring it back slightly just a step further forward and then I come back into my stance. Okay, 30 seconds. Notice I get closer as I go along. Control that pace. I throw that round kick too hard, right? Then I'm coming all the way around like I did before, okay? Now I'm keeping that core control to make sure that I can come back forward for that knee. Last one. Control, thrust, back, back, and time. Okay, let's go down for our sprawls, guys. Remember our sprawls? Down. Hands down first, keep the legs back, use the momentum when my hips coming down and then up to come back into that squat and rise up. Okay, four for ten. Ready? And go. One. Two. Again, continuity. Want the balls to my feet? Feet are hips with apart. As I kick back, wide of the hips with apart. 
for the squat. So all the way to that standing position, hands, shoulders for the heart. And at 10, is time. Okay, water back in in 20 seconds. Do the mats back out. Okay, let's come for a quick stretch here. So, go on to a different pose today. Let's go ahead and onto your yoga mats. Um, you don't necessarily need a yoga mat for this one. Uh, there'll be no um, button down on this one. Okay, actually, you know what? What I will do here is let's practice on that plow. Okay, so that plow position, I go from prone. Hands based on the ground as I draw my legs up straight, like any hundred feet. So I put structure in my legs. That's nice and linear. No pressure on my neck. The base is along the middle of my shoulder blades. You can use, use your hands here to open up the back of the hamstrings a bit more. Yeah, I'm coming off a few injuries, so my range is a little bit limited. I'm going to try to get my legs parallel to the ground. Nice. Now, again, one foot behind one knee. And let's rock forward. Open up those hips. Okay, three more. Down on my hip. Go back to that plow. Open up those hamstrings. Opposite foot. Run on the other knee. More on your hips. Down on your lower back. Keep that foot forward. And up. Two more. Plow. Legs straight, parallel to the ground, and opposite foot, and opposite knee. Rock forward without the assistance of your hands. Last one. Down carefully on the hip, on the glutes. And a switch. Foot behind me. Okay, so close today with coming to a standing position. You can leave your yoga mat on standby. I want to come into is my half moon pose. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with a slightly bent knee based on one leg. I want to turn my hips and shoulders to the opposite direction in which my toes are facing, okay? So, facing on that leg, I begin to extend all of my other limbs. Okay, so, I have my left pointing down and my right pointing up, and I extend back on my right foot, keep a bit of a demi point in that foot. To my toes are flex. I'm looking at you, but I want my gaze to be down through my fingers. Really open up my shoulders, open up my hips, keep my arms on the same line, staying really good, firm, and base on that base leg. As I begin to straighten that leg now, extend. I want to draw everything back in. Neutral and switch legs. 
Okay. So I'll switch my position as well. Okay, I'm going to base on that leg. Slightly bent knee, right? As bent to knee as I can to have a really good base. I'm going to want to turn my hips and shoulders opposite direction, which my toes are facing. And I'm going to unfurl my other limbs. As I begin to do that, I also begin to straighten my base leg. You can keep it bent for balance at first. I begin to extend. Notice my foot's pointed and my toes are flexed towards my knee, extending. Look down through the fingers to the ground. Stay in all four corners of the foot. Extend. Opening up those hips, opening up the shoulders. And slide into that leg again to have the base and balance. So I turn my hips back to neutral. And time. Just come down to the top of the feet. We will close and say, ah. Always be mindful of our breath, right? Process through body, mind, and spirit. Thanks so much for joining me for Martial Motion again. See you again next week, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Great talk.